I think everybody had a great Fourth of July week. Just looking around the, the studio here, we all look happy, yep. healthy. healthy. Listen, it was I, a great week. I, I give the, I give this week two thumbs up. <laughs> Can you do two thumbs up, T? I got uh, two thumbs up. Welcome back to Macrodosing. What's up? It's Tuesday. It is July 9th. We're back in studio. Had a very good week off for the 4th of July. Hope you guys did too. Hope you guys stayed safe. Today's episode is brought to you by Keeps. Macrodosing is sponsored by Keeps. Keeps helps men reclaim their identity. If your hair has always been a part of who you are and it's something that you want to keep around, Keeps can help. Hair or no hair, we think that you should be the one to decide. Keep the look that you're proud to see in the mirror. With a full suite of products designed to regrow hair, maintain your hairline, or help you cover bald spots, Keeps helps you find the exact products suited to your hair loss needs. Keeps also offers hair thickening shampoo, conditioner, and styling pomade. These products work together. They complement your treatment plan. They enhance results by making thinning hair look thicker using a special formula designed by hair loss experts. Over the last six years, Keeps has treated over 1 million men experiencing hair loss with only science-backed ingredients. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this podcast. Hair loss stops with Keeps. For a special offer to get started, go to keeps.com slash dose. That's keeps.com slash dose. Results may vary. Not offered in every state. Medications prescribed only if clinically appropriate. Consultation required. All right, we're back. I think everybody had a great 4th of July week. Just looking around the, the studio here, we all look happy, yep. healthy. healthy. Listen, I, a great week. I, I, give the, I give this week two thumbs up. <laughs> Can you do two thumbs up, T? I got uh, two thumbs up. Yeah, Big T got to experience the uh, the marvel that is the American medical system. Yeah, no, I got to tell you, my experience. I, I'm I'm down. If you have good insurance, the American medical system rocks. If you have good insurance, yes. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm down with with w- w- my experience was rather fantastic. So but. Big T's left arm is out of commission right now. He's got the biggest cast I've ever seen. It yeah. goes from his armpit down to his wrist right now. Uh, he was struggling to put on headphones because he can't use a left arm. Uh, it's good that it's your left arm, not your right arm. Yeah. No, you don't. A lot of stuff. I, I've I've been ranking joints recently. Mm-hmm. Um, elbow. It's it's no lower than two. I'd put it at one. You don't. You, you use your elbow for it's elbow and knee. Obviously, or one and two. Yeah. And I think you you'd rather have your elbows than knees. What about hip? You didn't think about hip. No. Um, would you put hip above knee? I think I might put hip above knee because if, if your hip is completely shattered, you can't move anything in that leg. That's true. Wheelchair. That's what we're talking That's about. That's true. All right. I would still go elbow one. Elbow might be Use one. Use your arms for a lot of stuff. Yeah. A lot and, of stuff. And you don't realize it. Yep. So uh, is that, has it been tough to blog? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I hadn't done one till today. What was it um, like? It was It was better than, than I thought, but... Um, there, we, got, we got speech to text too, but that's good. So, what is what's the diagnosis of your elbow? I had an olecranon fracture and avulsion, uh, which basically means the cap of my elbow was ripped off from the rest of my arm, and that's also where your tricep attaches to the rest of your arm. So, my tricep and the point of my elbow were hanging off basically so what happened walk walk the people through um what i was involved in a golf cart related incident you, in you had which a, it's a golf injury yeah you got injured playing golf do you know what the worst part is too i was one under through two holes i had hit the best approach shot i've ever hit in my entire life <laughs> i i the first hole i drove it about 270 right down the middle second shot and we had warned the guys we were playing with like hey we're not that good just so y'all know First drive, stripe it right down the middle. Second shot, hit it to within about three feet and birdie the first hole. I was like, holy shit, I'm unbelievable at golf. Second hole, par it. And I'm like, we are, this is going to be an amazing day. Third hole, uh, flipped the golf cart, got pinned under it, and uh, broke my elbow. So Who was driving? Me. So you flipped the golf cart. Well, what happened was... Where you had to turn onto the fairway was on like a bank. Yep. And I can't be the only person this has ever happened now, to. Now, was it banking down towards the fairway or was it banking away from the fairway? Or were you going it down? It was perpendicular the okay. to the fairway. So fairway is like this. You're turning like this and the bank is here. Okay. Um, 
and yeah, I just, I flipped it and got pinned under the cart, got a pretty nice gash on my head, uh, broke my elbow. Other than that, how long were fine. you under the cart for? 10, 15 seconds. Oh man. I was yelling at my buddy, get it off, get it off. He's like, I, I'm trying. Uh, he did finally, thank goodness. And, uh, and yeah, other than, other than the broken elbow, I'm, I'm fine. Did you know it was broken right away? No, I actually thought at the beginning, my leg was the problem because the golf cart was on my leg yeah. and I was like, it's going to snap my leg. Then he gets it off and I'm kind of taking stock and I'm like, I think I'm okay. And then I was like, as long as I can move this arm, I'm fine. And then I couldn't really. And then, so we go to an Playing urgent around care. your life. I, I'm, I'm still that, mad about that. That counts as you shot one under. Yeah, I, I finished the round one under. Yes. I did not complete the round, but I finished the round yes. one under. Um, we, we went to an urgent care and I'm typing on their little thing, signing in and he's behind me and he goes, Oh, oh. He, I'm like, what? He goes, you're fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. I'm like, what, what? He's like, your elbow is a little off, but like, you're fine. You're good. He's making throw up noises. Yeah. And, uh, and it did look, uh, he took a picture. It looked pretty bad. Um, Can I see the picture. Yeah, I'll, I'll find them. I'd like to see that. Um, and then, but then I got surgery on Friday and now we're, we're road to recovery. Yeah. You and Blake, big elbow injury guys. <laughs> yep. So you're going to have to wear the cone. You're going to have to be on Trazone for a while. Just be in your crate for most of the day. Okay. And then we'll gradually get you walking up steps. All right. And then about two months from now, you'll be fine to go back to daycare. That sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. Now I'm, I'm glad that you're, that you're okay. It sounds like it could have been worse. It it probably should have been worse, honestly. I'm I'm very thankful it wasn't. Um, but you know, shit happens. Shit happens. And so, how much was the surgery going to cost before insurance? So, um, if you did not have insurance, my one hour outpatient surgery would have cost you about seventy three thousand dollars. Jesus Christ! It cost me nothing. So, yeah. shout out to uh, Blue Cross. Is that who we have? Yeah. yeah. You could have just said Dave. I'm sure yeah, Dave would no, appreciate Dave. it. Yes, thank you, Dave. Dave paid for your elbow surgery. I, I do pay for the insurance, but... Yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, we have great insurance, apparently. So that that was very good to hear. Yeah, I'm glad you're okay. Glad you're okay. You got a nasty little cut on your on your ankle as well. Yeah. The, the x-ray little... looked gnarly, but I'll tell you what, having a cool x-ray with a broken bone, that's going to be something you can always pull out. The uh, My buddy was standing back with the x-ray tech when they took it. And he looks at the screen with the elbow split in half and goes, oh, so it's like really broken. They go, we can't say. He's like, you don't have to say anything. I, I can see it right there. He, and the guy's kind of laughing. He's like, yeah, we, we can't say. Um, oh, because of HIPAA? Yeah, I think. Uh, so that was that was my head to. Oh, shit. How many beers? <laughs> Fellas. Um, there's the, that's what the elbow looked like. Yeah, that's broken. Yeah. it does. That actually does look like Blake's elbow looked. I think you and Blake have the same injury. <laughs> Maybe. Um, it's fixed now, though. I'm glad. So, just gotta just gotta wait to get this thing. Then off. you pulled a smart move, all time like 300 IQ play on your part, scheduling the surgery so it wouldn't interfere with playing NCAA college football. Well, no. So the surgery was just as quick as they could do it, but then they were like, for your follow up appointment when you'll get this taken off. We can do like 16th through like basically that whole week. I was like 16th as early as possible mm -hmm. uh, because that is the day that NCAA comes out. And they were like, okay, we can do 7 a.m. I said, actually, don't do as early as possible. Give me 8.30. <laughs> Would you be able to play? You'd have I, to go double straight arms. Right now? Yeah. It'd be it'd be very hard. Yeah, you'd have to go double straight arms. But with, with what they're putting me in next week, they said I should be good to go. And so what day did you have the surgery on? This past Friday, July 5th. Past Friday. What was that experience like? I was very nervous. I had had, so I had my tonsils out and then I'd had a cyst removed. That's the two times I'd had anesthesia, but never like a reconstructive surgery. Yeah. Um, but it was pretty, you know, I, the last thing I remember was being wheeled in there and they were, we were just talking. And the next thing I remembered was waking up. So. It was, it was just very, you know, leading up to it, apprehensive. But. They gave you, uh, they probably gave you like some anti-anxiety stuff before they hit you with the anesthesia. They had to give it to me twice because oh, they really? gave it to me the first time. They're like, are you, do you feel that? I was like, I don't feel a thing. I'm yeah. still very, and they're you're, like, okay, we'll do it man. again. Yeah. I was like, D that's what I told the anesthesiologist. I was like, listen, don't, if, if it comes down to, do we give them another shot? G give me air on the side of too much. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to. 
as I, well, I said, I'm, I realize it's an unfounded fear, but I'm terrified of like waking up in the middle. She goes, oh, have you seen the movie Awake? I was like, <laughs> no, but thank you for telling me that that's a thing that's out there now. Um, I, I think from what I know about anesthesiologists, they, it's like an inexact science. And you have to go to school for a long time to get that job because it, that's the most important. They're more important than the surgeon. They're very important. You get you make good money as an anesthesiologist. Yeah, I, I, I think they probably get sued the most too for doing too much or not. Or enough. if if something goes wrong, yeah, yeah. Did they have you count back from from ninety nine or hundred? No, they just we were talking about the vacation that I was supposed to go on that I didn't get to, and then uh, next thing I knew, I was out. Yeah, golf man. Contact sport. I know. So what's the recovery time? I'm not sure after I get this off. I think, you know, some physical therapy and stuff. But I think once this comes off, like, I'm supposed to be close to okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, you lucked out because it's your left arm because the the butt wiping yeah. could be an issue if it was yep. the right arm. I, I had surgery on my right hand, and they wrapped the entire thing up. Had to use the left hand for a little bit. That's it's horrifying. It's very, very tricky. Even just having one hand is bad enough. Yeah, it's bad. It's not good. But if it's if it's the left that's wrapped up, you can persevere. I um I had an interesting butt wiping experience over the past week. Can you you elaborate on? Would that? you like me to go on? I went to Greece. Had a very Congrats. fun vacation. Thank you. Santorini is a beautiful island, and uh, Lonzo Ball was there, which is cool. Because I can report that Lonzo Ball's knee is is got to be feeling pretty healthy because it's a very steep island to walk around. Um, in Greece, for the most part, they're a country that does not have uh, plumbing that is strong enough to take on paper products. So there's a lot of European countries that that don't have that issue. You see it a lot of times in Central South America. You go into the bathroom and it says, "Do not flush any paper products." So you're supposed to like wipe your butt and then you throw the tissue into a tiny little trash can. Are you serious? That's, that's in the same room as the toilet. Yeah. If you ever go to like, um, in Ecuador, it was like that. And Panama it was like that, I believe, in a lot of places. Not in like super fancy hotels. Uh, but a lot of times on islands, you have that problem because their their sewage system, the pipes aren't strong enough. So in a lot of parts of Greece, they say, it wasn't the entire week, but it was like, I'd say 50% of the time, you weren't supposed to flush any toilet paper there. Now, the good news is, at one of the places, they had a bidet, but the bidet was like a hose with like a little click on it that you turn on. So you, instead of wiping, you just turn that thing onto your butthole. You just spray yourself down. It's a very weird experience. How was that? Uh, it's it's not my first bidet experience. I got to I was lucky enough to use one at the Lake Charles Casino uh, when we went there a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. That was uh, that was shocking to me. But the second time, I think I kind of like bidets. But I, I like a bidet that also has the option of having toilet paper. Right. Because otherwise you can just walk around with a wet ass afterwards. But just something to look into. If you're going to an island, make sure that you check into the toilet paper situation. Because I, I, I will was, certainly check that now. That was an unpleasant surprise when I got to Greece. The first bathroom I went into, it says, please do not flush any paper products. So you had some where you had to just put them in a trash can? Yep. How often are those changed? Multiple times a day. In a good well, bathroom. I mean, but that's still it's not still enough. Not, it's still not good. Multiple times an hour, maybe. It, it should be. I wanted to just take it out myself. But yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah, good luck. Good luck if you ever go to a uh, a country or island like that. But um, but I am glad that you don't have as bad wiping problems. With I've hand. still got the hand, too. Yeah, you got the hand. That's nice. And they wrap that thing up pretty good. Yeah. That's a nice tape job. Are, are, are you, like, itchy under the cast anywhere? No, this one, the one I had before from like the ortho place was kind of shoddily done. This one, very professional. You can, it's got a nice little, just good, good job by whoever did this. It's a solid rap job. This is Northwestern. They, they know what they're doing. Are we going to have people sign your cast? Absolutely not. Why not? Because <laughs> we don't need to. Why not? Where's the fun of that? Well, it's not really a cast. It's just an ace bandage around a splint. Oh, okay. So there's no actual... Yeah, it's not like, like a hard cast. There. Okay. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah, or maybe it heals and you're like rookie of the year. I did say that. I was like, what if I become a left-handed like reliever now? Yeah. You got to try at least when you get that thing off. I mean, my elbow could be stronger than normal. It could be. Did you see that one guy at the Yankees game last yeah. night? Yeah. Nice arm. That that felt like it was rookie of the year. Yep. 
Yeah, that was. I think that was every kid's dream when they were younger. When that movie came out, it was like, I hope I get injured and then I'm able to throw the ball 100 miles an hour. I mean, that kind of is what happens to pitchers now. They get Tommy John when they're 18, 19, and then they come back and they're better than before. Yeah. Big T, do you have any uh, any complaints about anything? Uh, I know that you're happy with the the healthcare system as yeah. you see it. Yeah, um, complaints. I, I did. I feel I was pressured by the anesthesiologist to get a nerve block. Mm -hmm. For anyone that has never gotten that, basically after surgery, they put a huge needle into your neck that your whole arm, you just don't feel, which sounds great. You're like, oh, coming out surgery, you won't have any pain. Mm -hmm. Well, it was just, it was, it was psychological torture. I needed just to flex my fist like more than I needed to breathe. Yeah. And I just couldn't do it for 24 hours. And like, I couldn't sleep. It was horrible. Then you're I, like, what's wrong with my body? Yeah. The pain was, and I touched my hand a couple times and it was like, it was like a dead person's hand. Like it wasn't my hand. Oh, it was so awful. Um, so if, if, unless you really need one, I would advise against a nerve block. Um, other than that, didn't get to go on vacation. That kind of sucked. All right. Let me ask you another poop-related question. Yeah. Do I have permission to do that? Uh, depending, but yes. Have you pooped yet? Minimally. Yeah. That's the bad part about surgery. Yeah. That's the bad part. Not a ton. And then you just sit on the toilet and you're like, come on, it's got to be here. I figured that's what the question was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing prunes? Uh, colace. Okay. Yeah. So last time I had surgery, um, actually, no, it wasn't surgery, I don't think, because I was in New York. Oh, it was after kidney stones. After I had uh, kidney stones. Guy next to me at the hospital was was having that. Oh, was he in, was he sweating in a lot of pain? I couldn't see him. I just heard him talk about it. Yeah, it's bad. So when I had the kidney stones in New York, uh, I went to the hospital. They gave me a bunch of pain medication. I was taking that. I was on it for like five days, I'd say. Uh, after the fifth day, I'm no longer on it. But I haven't pooped in like three days or like four days. And it's getting to the point where I'm uncomfortable. I'm walking around. I feel like I got a brick in my stomach. And uh, every time I see a bathroom, I'm going into it because you get the feeling like, oh, now's the time. You got to go. And uh, I would just sit there and I'd be like, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And I'd reached the point of desperation where I went to the I went to the drugstore. I went down the in aisle. So, see, this is what I was hoping you weren't going to say. Well, no, no, wait. Just wait. Went down the in aisle. Uh, I picked up the enema. I looked at it and then I read the instructions on the back and I thought to myself, am I really going to do this? <laughs> am I going to buy like some gloves? And so when you get, when you go to the store and you buy like a, a plunger, right? Maybe your toilet's clogged. You can get buffer items. So it's not like you're just going to the store for a plunger. You can pick up some snacks, maybe get some right. stuff for the grill. You can kind of diversify your cart a little There's bit. There's no softening the enema. There's no softening the enema at all. Ironically. Yeah. So, I was just standing there holding the pack and I was like, I'm going to give this one more try before I go, before I make that leap into Enema Town. So I went home and it ended up happening. It was a great, great time. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. I, re I don't care how long it, I refuse. I won't do it. Yeah. Just mix in some prunes. Maybe it'll happen. I hope but so. that's, that's the worst part to me about having, having surgery or painkillers or anything like that. But apparently they're not giving you painkillers. Oh, these, thought, thought yeah, actually teed off. Yeah. They gave me enough five milligram hydrocodones mixed with uh, Tylenol to last from Friday till today on Monday. Yeah. So I called, I was like, Hey, it's still like, you know, after the medication wears off for a little while, it still kind of hurts. Can I get some more? And they were like, no, we just recommend mixing ibuprofen and Tylenol every four hours. They were treating me like a drug addict trying to get these five milligram hydrocodones that couldn't do anything if you wanted them to. Yeah. I was so mad. And that was Northwestern? Yeah. Northwestern medicine. I thought you were a junkie. Yeah. Get big T some Crazy. drugs. Crazy. Get big T some drugs. <laughs> so so now I'm just taking a ton of ibuprofen and Tylenol. Damn. You want me to get you some heroin? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Does that, is that a painkiller? Heroin is, is yeah, codeine. Is painkiller? So codeine, Percocet, Vicodin, all those things, morphine, they're all opiates. So they're all from the same plant. Okay. Just like heroin. Yeah. That's how people get hooked on heroin is they get hooked on painkillers. Yeah. And then once they get off painkillers, they get sick because they're like, oh, I'm dependent on 
on this drug. Well, Northwestern will make sure you do not get hooked on any painkillers. You know what? It's probably better that they err on that side than just like give you a whole shitload of it. But I, I but guess, it, it's but ridiculous like, that you had surgery on Friday and you're out of pain medication by today. Agreed. That's kind of that's stupid. I agree. They should have given you at least a full week. A, a week. Yeah. I could I could deal with a week. Yeah. It's a lot easier to get drugs for Blake. I bet it is. I just go, I, I call up the vet and I'm like, hey, we need more, more of the anti-anxiety stuff. They're like, sure, here you go. Yeah. If I was abusing them. Can vets write scripts for humans? Uh, I can try. <laughs> Dennis can, right? I, I will, uh, yeah, Dennis can. I think some vets will do it for you i'll call i'll call blake's vet and say hey he uh he seems to be limping a little bit also he hasn't pooped in a couple days is there yeah, anything man. that you have for that yeah <laughs> i'm excited about blake though he's back to 100 percent. so he was he was at daycare while i was in greece just jumping around having a good time that was nice to see that's good so it gets better okay it really does good to hear i yeah. feel i feel okay right now just got once once we get this off we'll be good to go what's the sleep situation like so last, so Friday night was like, not even joking, maybe the worst night of my life with the nerve block thing. Like I would fall asleep and then I'd wake up and it will, would have been three minutes. Mm -hmm. And like, I just did that all night, did not sleep. It was horrible. Saturday night was a little better. Woke up a couple times. Last night, I don't think I woke up. I think last night I was pretty good. So hopefully from here on out, we're solid. All right. All right. Well, good luck with that. Uh, ladies, how was your how was your Fourth of July week? Good. Good. Just yeah. got back to basics. Just what, what is that Borg? You Borg? Oh God, no! <laughs> oh hell, no! Um, I actually told a friend about Borging uh, over in Greece, and he was like, "What? <laughs> what the fuck?" Uh uh. I was yeah. like, "Yeah, well, it's really no different than Jungle Juice, except you have your own. If anything, it's it's Jungle Juice, but more sanitary." Because you have yeah, your own that's personal true. Yes. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. Um, I wanted on record I did not Borg while I was home for Fourth of July okay. break. You've changed. <laughs> I've never Borged. You've ever. never Borged? Never. They were becoming more popular as I was like leaving college. And I was like, at this point, I don't need to do all of that. Like, I can legally drink. I don't need to do all of this uh, to get drunk. Um, no, just got back to the basics. Went to the, went to the homeland. Saw everyone. Just like... It's so nice sometimes to kind of like be in a nice small town. You're like, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Was it was the city popping because Machine Gun Kelly dropped a new album? <laughs> yep. You could feel the buzz in the air. Yeah, I did go to his <laughs> coffee shop when what, I was. He's home. got a coffee shop. Yeah. Yeah, it's called the Twenty Seven Club. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? It's like you know the Twenty Seven Club. Yeah, yeah, I do, but Big T doesn't. So the twenty I actually do not as well. The twenty seven <laughs> club is like a famous, um, like I guess superstition is what you. Oh, would call you're talking it. about like the twenty seven club of like people that die. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's what it's named. Okay. After. Oh, okay. And he, MGK that's, just has like a big coffee shop in the middle of like downtown Cleveland. Um, it, how old, is, how yeah. old is he? How old is MGK? Yeah. Oh, let's see. I I would guess he is thirty three. Uh, yes. Okay. Is that stolen valor? He's 34. Like he's still alive and he's 34 and he's naming his coffee shop after the 27 Club. <laughs> right. It, it probably I think, is. I mean. Because he was a guy, like, he's always been, like, on the dark side of things. So he's talked about how, like, there's a good chance that he could die. Right. And then he lives past 27. It's been open for a while. You know, it hasn't been open for seven years, though. I was going to say maybe he opened it when he was 27, but I don't think it's been open that long. So uh. who is in the 27 Club? Famous members of the 27th. Is it like Kurt Cobain? Or Kurt Cobain. Like, yeah. I'm going to guess. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Janis Joplin. Hold on. Jimi Hendrix. Are you looking it up? No, I'm just saying okay. people yep. off the top yep. of my head. Janis Joplin. Jimi Hendrix. Kurt Cobain. Elvis was way older. Amy Winehouse. Oh, Amy Winehouse. Oh, yeah. Um, was Brad Knoll from Sublime? Uh, How old was he? Is that guy famous enough? And he it doesn't look like he's on the list. Banger album. Um he died at twenty eight. Okay. Um J Jim Morrison. It, uh Robert Johnson, blues player. Jean Michael Basquiat. Pat Tillman is on this list. Did they put Pat Tillman? Yeah. <laughs> That's a wild inclusion. It's very wild. Yeah. So, H how funny was that when uh, when the ESPYS announced that they were going to give the Pat Tillman Award to Prince Harry? 
Is that what's happening? Oh, recently? Yeah. I I love that headline just because I knew how mad it was going to make people. (laughs) Um, Yeah, no. So the city was abuzz with MGK's new album drop. Obviously, there was (laughs) a parade I missed. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Uh, No. As I get older, I've realized like Cleveland's Cleveland's a great place. There are there are good people, good things in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, Are there? Yeah. Just not entertainment, <laughs> dining, uh, no, we have people. The, um, well, the casino, the casino. It's it's also like where my like parents are at. Like it's 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 what some may consider God's country. Can you give a, your your top four? I'd like things? to meet who considers it that. Yeah, if I took you to my parents' house because they don't live like in like. Well, right, they live an hour away. Yeah, but it's it's God's country. <laughs> who are, who are, what are your top four things about Cleveland? Okay, um. Mitchell's Ice Cream, which is a ice cream place in Cleveland. I respect really that. Um, Having the ice cream place number one in a big city, though. Yeah. Well, wait, I didn't. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Like, that's, good, that's, that's, that's good if it's that's good if it's a town. Small town. But if yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a city of millions. Well, wait, wait. I didn't think we had to go in a certain order. My mom's number one. Okay. Does that count? Panda pick. <laughs> I agree. She's cool. She should be number one. Yeah. Okay. My mom and my dad. No, you said one. you no. said your mom number one. <laughs> that was one. a pity throw to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my parents are number one. Mitchell's ice cream is number two. Um, the lake, if you're far enough away from it to not like be in it, you oh see how God. you see how this could sound. <laughs> All right, so number and one, then four is my. Hold on, four is. Um, you see how we've arrived at Bad City. Yeah. <laughs> four. Is the the place where my parents live? I don't want to dox them. That doesn't count, though. We're talking about Cleveland. Really? Okay, F- four, four is in Cleveland. four is uh, Deshaun Watson the between Guardians. the lines. <laughs> no, no, four is <laughs> four is um, four would definitely be the thirsty parent. Ugh, no, <laughs> that's like five A. Um, four would be um, a good Guardians game. Okay. It's a, a daytime it's, Guardians game. Yeah, the, it's like, it's it's it, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, daytime okay. Guardians. Game. All right. So is that far enough from the lake for it to be fun? <laughs> yeah, it's the perfect amount of distance away. What about the statues? What about the Guardian statues on oh, that yeah, bridge? On the bridge. Oh, see, those. overrated. You think those statues are overrated? I when they named it after those, like. I, I think a lot of people were like, we don't really talk about those things enough for them to be the name of our <laughs> franchise. Yeah, but I get it because the ballpark is right there. Yeah, it is. So Good ballpark. I'd, I'd like you to make a graphic that's Mad Dog's top three things about <laughs> Cleveland. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one is the ice cream shop. Yep. yep. Number two is the lake, but not being super close to the like lake. You as long as you're far uh, away. Yeah, the lake, as long as you're kind of far and away. And when I say lake. far, I mean like a couple feet. Like you just don't need to get your toes in there. The lake that you're not in. The lake a, when a lake, you're not in it. As long as you're not in it. Yep. The okay. lake for viewing. The lake front. Can and I say it, that? No. Oh. It's no. too late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The God, graphics already been made. About God's it. country. <laughs> it is God's country. It is where my parents are at is God's country. It's where you go to reconnect. With your parents. With my, <laughs> like with, with nature. Yeah. Touch grass. What about you, McKinsey? Um, I went home to to Albany, upstate New York. Mm-hmm. So, no, probably not much different. <laughs> Albany or Cleveland, who you got? <laughs> You've been to both. I have been to both. Um, I would personally pick Albany, but it's definitely not as big as Cleveland. But Mad Dog's parents aren't there. That's true. But your parents but my are in parents Albany. Are there. Great, pl- great people. <laughs> yes. That was very funny when Rebecca Lobo in the uh, the women's <laughs> yes, tournament was, was just like, it stinks that we're in Albany. There's nothing to do here. <laughs> There's literally nothing to do. Yeah. No, well, she's not wrong, but she's not right. Yeah, like there's definitely stuff to do, but I wouldn't be like you can't say it out loud. Taking a trip to Albany just for fun. Yeah, I think the tourism centers of Cleveland and Albany definitely have their work cut out for them. Yeah. I think that Cleveland is a top ten city in the Midwest. Oh, yes. for sure. All right. Well, now hang on. So we have top five. We have Chicago. Top five. There's no chance it's top five. Hold on. Chicago. Columbus. Don't you like Columbus? I do better? love Columbus. I've heard Columbus, Ohio, yep. is much better. It is insane. St. Louis. No. no. Why no? I don't like St. Louis. Minneapolis. I, I've never been there. I don't love St. Louis either, but it's inarguably better than Cleveland. I'll tell you no. what, I, I like Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee's okay. good. Minneapolis is great in not the winter. 
Yeah. Right. So that's four if you don't count St. Louis. Indy. Um, I've never been. Indy's fun. I've been there a few times. It's a it's a nice city. Good restaurants. St. Uh, Elmo's. Very walkable. South Bend, horrible city, but does have something to do. Yeah, but yeah. horrible city. Yeah, but like so do like so then that's just Big Ten. Well, that's yeah the Midwest. Yeah. Well, Madison, Wisconsin. Oh yeah, no, I like Madison. Yeah, good city. All right, so now we're at six. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't put Cincinnati. Cincy. On that list. I was going to say Cincy. Don't put Cincinnati. Why on not? Since he's fun. Mm-mm. Got the chili, Joe Burrow. No. Nope. Well, no. Great ballpark. Uh, I came back from the interview with Joe like, Burrow. And, I don't like Great American and ballpark. I, I told Mad Dog that uh, <laughs> that Joe actually said hi to her, and then I was like, no, he didn't actually. Say <laughs> but for no. a second. Boy crazy mad dog went boy insane. <laughs> no, I'm putting I'm putting uh, no. <laughs> Joe J- he can be himself. He can go do his own thing. I don't need him. <laughs> okay. He's okay. He's great. The the crazy part was when he 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 pulled his hair back with his hand. He like combed his hair back and that one piece that always falls down, that one little like Superman curl. Yeah. It just fell naturally down. Yeah. That's he, pretty sick. He doesn't style it at all. That's just what happens to his hair. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Very jealous of That's that. That's crazy. He probably uses keeps. Probably. Yeah, for sure. I would sure. imagine. Yeah. And he drinks body armor. That's true. Okay, yes. so other cities in the Midwest ahead of Cleveland. Are, Cincinnati's not ahead of Cleveland. Is Pittsburgh the Midwest? See, I was talking about that yesterday. It's on the East Coast. P- it's Pittsburgh Apple, is not. I think not. it's Appala- Appala- it is, it's, Appalachian. It's like Appalachian adjacent, yeah. Yeah. Pittsburgh's but, but like its own But when you're looking thing. at a map, it is in the eastern seaboard fifth to quarter of the united states yeah i think i think pittsburgh is its own thing yeah you know pennsylvania doesn't touch a a ocean it's landlocked Mm. pretty crazy who is it wait why is that crazy well because a lot of people think that it does i did wait so where does philadelphia like what borders new jersey new jersey New Jersey steals all their ocean it's like croatia if you look at a map of of eastern europe croatia just it's a thief of the ocean uh, let's see. Putten Bay, Ohio. <laughs> ah, yeah. Now, now we're talking. Uh, Santa Claus, Indiana. Got to be up there. Yeah. Holiday World. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about Detroit? No. I don't think so. Come Detroit on. or don't Cleveland? Don't be silly. That's honestly, that's your best. That's your comparison for who's last. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, Duluth. Oh, oh I actually, I've never been. That I've heard good things. things. Great things. Great things about Duluth. We still need to go. Yeah. yeah. We do. Um, All right. Then I've got Flint. Then I've got Cleveland. <laughs> no, Cleveland's fun. I'll be honest. I, yeah, I've yeah. I've had fun in Cleveland. Yeah, it's, it's like not as bad as you think it would be. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's surprising. Kind of, it's just kind of fun to shit on sometimes. Also, the people people <laughs> make easy. the place. There are good people there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good Midwestern people there. Also, very very inexpensive. It was a treat to go out there. I'm going to submit uh, my personal favorite city in the Midwest, Orland Park, Illinois, hmm. which is uh, about 30 minutes outside of Chicago, and there's just a strip of every chain restaurant and store that you've ever heard of in your life, and they're all on one street, and it's amazing. That sounds incredible. It's yeah, it it's I, I'm going this next weekend. <laughs> it sounds like that picture uh, where it's like, this is America, and it's taken of a, it's like a, a street right off a highway. It's yeah. got like every gas station, fast food place. No, dude, it's awesome. The what European do, mind could not comprehend. That's no. right. Yeah. What are, so what kind of stores are we talking like? Chili's? Oh, yeah. Obviously, there's Chili's. Probably there's Red a, Robin. Um, gotta be. There's a Miller's Ale House. You ever been there? Yeah. No. Great restaurant. There's, you know, Longhorn. I, every restaurant you can think of. And then there, just every store, too. There's 10 strip malls. It's great spot in Orland Park. Chuck lives there. Shout out Chuck. Shout out Chuck. Mm, shout out. Tell you what, one one thing I am truly elite at, I believe in in my heart. Um, actually, two things. One is being able to change the channel back on a football game right as it's getting back to the action. Like I'm talking within yep. maybe half a second. It's an important skill. Uh, not anymore, unfortunately. I don't get to show it off that much because we're watching all the games here. But uh, the other thing I truly believe I'm elite at. Better than I'd say 99.9% of the population, I can sniff out a Bank of America. I can tell you <laughs> when I am in close proximity to a Bank of America. What's G- your, what's your like? Based off the vibes of the yeah. other stores, uh, the architecture of strip malls, just the, the, um, just the vibe of, of that part of a town or a city that I'm in. I can tell you if I'm close by and you can just drop me off at a street corner and you tell me you're half mile away from Bank of America. Drop me off blindfolded. 
I will start walking <laughs> just based on my own like homing pigeon instincts. I will get you to a Bank of America within <laughs> the, I'll, I'll go the shortest distance as the crow flies to the bank. Is that the bank you use? It is. Yeah. Okay. But I've always been like that with Bank. It's probably why I started using Bank yeah. of America because I was using some regional banks when I was in Virginia. And uh, then when I moved to Texas, I was like, you know what? It's time. It's time. I've got good. I got good instincts when it comes to this bank. That's good. Yeah. I challenge anybody to a Bank of America off against me. <laughs> like, drop me whatever city, doesn't matter. I'll get you there. <laughs> I will get you there. Uh, do we want to talk a little bit of politics? Uh, I think we have to. We miss <laughs> what what a week we missed. I know. Crazy, crazy week because I think the debate was on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was the last night I was uh, healthy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it didn't go well. Uh, depends who you ask, but I, yeah. I would say that mm -hmm. I, I would, think it didn't go well. I would say like both candidates. It was it was a tough. It was a tough night for America. Yeah. I, it was it was genuinely shocking for me to watch not the debate the the post game, where everyone on CNN was shocked seemingly that that this happened, um, and anyone with a functioning brain could have told you that was going to happen for the last year. Well, you've seen, and they've been saying, no, he does trigonometry, and he's he's the healthiest guy we've ever seen. He, you just got to see between ten a.m. and three p.m. in these meetings, he's unbelievable, and then the. Again, I've maintained this entire time they're not going to let him run, uh, which is looking like a good take right now. But he says he's running. Yeah. So the past, I'd say the past six to eight months, if you've been watching the news, you've seen a, a big downturn in Joe and how he deals with a, a microphone. Did you see him this morning? Uh, no, I, I heard him. He called into he called like, into Morning Joe. Yeah, he sounded he sounded better this morning. I don't know, not not too much. I thought he sounded okay this morning, but th it was it was striking. It was like glaring how bad he was during that debate. And then you have Trump, who's just I mean, Trump. I would say he did not not have a good debate either. But it was not like I don't think this guy can get around. And there were moments where it's like Joe. It just seems like this is. Go home, be with your family. Why? Why are you? Why are you running for office? Why is anybody that's that old? Why is Mitch McConnell still in Congress? Why is he a senator? He's got grandkids, right? Go hang out with them. Don't just like get disconnected and and forget how to talk in front of Mike. And there were like four or five times during the debate where Biden, it, it felt like he got like just completely disconnected. I mean, in the first ten minutes, it was over. I'd say when I when I saw the camera zoom in on both candidates, I was like, Joe, Joe, buddy, yeah, what's going on here? It looked um, like a zombie. And he I should have taken some of those drugs that they were talking about. Yeah. I think they intent they told Trump to like you have to restrain yourself from beating the shit out of him because it's gonna look really bad for you. Yeah. If you because he only really went after him like one time. It was he, because of their golf game. <laughs> well, okay, so twice he did that, and then there was the other time he goes, I don't know what he just said right there. I don't think he knows either. Yeah. But those were really the only two times he like made fun of him. Yeah. And I think that was intentional because it would have looked real. It would have looked like he was beating up on a grandpa. The the golf back and forth was it, it insane, was crazy because the the question was, uh, what what do you plan to do about the rising costs of health or of uh, child care, um, especially for the middle class that is having a hard time affording it? And if you if you talk to anybody that has kids, child care is like it's a big issue. Usually parents are like, you know what, one of the two of us is just not going to work. And then we'll just take what would have been your salary. And now you're just raising the kid. So it's like astronomically expensive to raise a child. It's like a real issue. And so they're, they're asked what they would do to tackle these things. Somehow they just start talking about golf and then they start comparing handicaps and then challenging each other to matches and being like, I'll hit it straighter than you. I don't think you'd drive the ball 50 yards if you're lucky. I was like, what the fuck are we watching right now? Do you remember what Arian's text was to the macrodosing chat? What? He said two handicapped folks talking about their handicaps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I said, I if Joe Biden could go out there right now and hit a golf ball 75 yards within 45 degrees either direction of how the way he's trying to hit it, I'd vote for him. Would you really? Absolutely. Because there's a 0% chance he can do that. Yeah. There's some clips of his swing that went out there afterwards. Said he's an eight handicap? I think he said he was an eight. I went no, back and I no, he said that. he was a six. Now he's an eight. If Joe Biden's an eight, yeah, there's that's just. I mean, so, eight, eight over on each hole, maybe. So, so then after the debate, 
what I saw uh, from like the CNN panel, which by the way had like 50 people on it. That was the biggest desk I've ever seen in my I life. I love the big desk though. They do that for the Super Bowl sometimes where they put like every ESPN yeah. analyst, they get like 25 of them out there. Shows you the gravity of the event. Yes. I like a big desk. Yeah, so it was a huge, huge desk. And uh, they were just all like, uh, they got to replace them. <laughs> like I've never seen uh, pundits because what, what they do is in these, in these like post-debate desks, they bring in people that are just party members. So you've got like Anderson Cooper, you've got... Uh, people that are just hosts of CNN shows. And then you have like DNC representatives and you have surrogates for each candidate. And there were just people that are, are lifelong Democrats at this desk being like, yeah, we got to get him out. Van Jones was going to cry. Yeah. And then they bring on Kamala and then they just. Oh, that was crazy. And credit to Anderson Cooper for actually asking her real questions, which yeah. I was a little surprised by. Yeah. And, and then she was just hung out to dry. If I, if I was her, I just wouldn't have done that hit. Yeah, that it's was like crazy. There's a no win situation there. for it where it's like you have to say that you support Joe Biden because uh, you can't, you're his vice president. You can't say anything bad about him. And, but you could tell that she was obviously concerned. So now, now we've got a very interesting convention coming up here in Chicago in just a couple that's weeks. That's going to be a yeah, shit show. That's going to be a shit show. And Biden's saying that he's not going to drop out. That's what he's telling people, apparently. But I don't know. And let me say this also. All this talk that Democrats have about Donald Trump will ruin democracy, democracy is on the ballot, this, that, and the other. If they allow Joe Biden to run, that shows you they don't mean a word of that. They just want to beat Donald Trump. That's all they want to do. But but all the talk of like he's an existential threat to democracy, this, that, and the other, if you run a dead person against him, you clearly don't mean that at all. Yeah, I think which, they, which you shouldn't because it's nonsense. I think but. they just want to beat Donald Trump. That's it. That's all it's ever been for them. And uh, there's people saying like, well, he's the only person to ever beat Trump in an election. Yeah, bitch, Donald Trump's run twice yeah. for office. He's he, he's batting 500, okay? So it's not like we're, we're talking about the undertaker at WrestleMania here. And if you count the primary, his, his main competition was Jeb Bush, who was just as dead as Biden is, and who, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz? Little Marco, yeah, Lion Ted. It was... Uh, it was a bad day. It's a bad day for America. So I don't know what's going to happen from this point out. What if the Democrats, because they, all they want to do is just win. What if they just nominate Donald Trump? <laughs> I mean, he's he's been a Democrat. He has. Come home. Come home, Donald. That'd be hilarious. They uh, That was a really bad day for America, too, because Greg Berhalter let us lose to Panama right before that as well. That's true. He should be fired. Um. But yeah, it was just, it was crazy. And I don't, I can't imagine. I They did that on purpose in June to have time to replace him. You think so? 100%. You think this was the strategy the entire 1, time? 1,000%. Because they're, now they're wait, sending who, him out there to do a hit every day and make himself look worse. Who's they? The DNC. You think the DNC did that on purpose? Yes. I don't know because it panicked people. But it shouldn't have. If, if that panicked you, your brain is... Uh, not working. So I, I knew that Joe was bad. I knew that he was, it was getting worse for him. I didn't know it was this bad. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Be a hundred percent serious. And I know you're not a Democrat in quotation marks. I'm not. Marks, in fact, I, I think that what the DNC has done with Joe Biden is like, it's, it, it takes the mask off. But you, you lean more left. Do, are you at all concerned, shocked, horrified at the White House for months saying not only is he great, he's awesome, but that like videos of him are deep fakes and th just blatant. You want to talk about mis and disinformation. I, I think just I, lying to people's faces. I think that that's yes, it's a problem, but it's also uh, the aggregators on the right were in fact at times clipping things intentionally. But it was very but, and they clear. Did, but what I'm saying is they didn't have to do that. I think there was one video where that happened. No, but, there, there were a few different times where it was like, look how bad this this guy is right now. And they would play a clip. And it's like, that didn't sound like that bad. It just sound like a guy stuttering a word to start a sentence. Uh, so there were some times where they were like throwing too much out there as opposed to just like letting the, the real instance of it. Because there have been like, I'm going to say six, eight times in the past, like uh, probably a year or so where it's been glaring that Joe's not doing well.
It's been yeah. Glaring. I mean, yeah. If you pay any modicum of attention at all, like he yeah. is not okay. Yeah. And so it, it is like as somebody that that pays attention, like Arian does more to the policy than to the person. It shows you how little they care about actually putting somebody in office that is the best person for the job. They just want somebody that they think can beat Donald Trump. And they think Joe Biden is the only person that can do that. I don't think they think that anymore, though. Because yeah. they're trying to get him out and he won't leave. Which well, is which crazy. It, it's also very funny. If you've ever dealt with like a parent or a grandparent who just like, I'm not leaving my home. Yeah, but like, even then, so you can understand why someone would do that. You know, you've lived on your own for 60 years and now they're saying you need help, whatever. Like, that can be a give difficult it, give thing. Give me the car, Joe. This is, he supposedly has a vested interest in Trump losing. Like, he wants that. If he wants that, you would think he would understand that he, you're not the guy, pal. You're not that guy. Yeah. And yet he somehow is still insistent upon running. So when I saw the debate, I, I thought to myself, if, if Biden sticks in here, he's going to lose. It's going to be Trump. If it's Joe Biden versus a thousand Trump, percent, it's going to be Trump. Um, and then I've seen like now there's a now people on, on the uh, the left are getting mad at the media saying that the media is not doing their job. The media is just attacking Joe Biden because it's getting clicks and it's uh, it's like doing a disservice to democracy. I think you can look at the candidates that we have right now and be like, Joe Biden is uh, old as fuck. His brain is not doing well. It's half oatmeal at this point. And then on the other on the other side, you've got a guy that has been found liable for uh, pretty much rape and what thirty six felonies, and then he's on trial for like a bunch more. I, it's just it's bad. It's bad scene for America. What? So what do you think is going to happen? I think I think Joe will eventually drop out. I think it's not going to be Kamala. Oh, I think it has to be at this point. One, because she's the only one that they can transfer the campaign money to. And two, because if they pass over a black woman for Gavin Newsom or whoever. I don't think it's going to be Gavin. Gavin is too busy doing his podcast with Marshawn Lynch. Who do you Marshawn think it's going to be? Agent. Have you seen that? Yeah, I saw that. Politicking? They've yeah. been working on the podcast for six months. So if it's not them, who is it? Gretchen Whitmer? I think. Yeah. Oh, well, she has no chance either. Why not? Swing state governor. I don't think so. Midwest likes her. I think if it's going to be anybody else, it has to be Kamala because they're all rallying behind her now. Like, oh, we never hated her. We've always loved Kamala. She's awesome. It would be very funny, though. You'd have to admit it'd be funny if Kamala got passed over for another woman. Yeah, it'd be a, a that's a veep storyline. It's a veep storyline. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just think if it's going to be somebody, it's going to be her. What if what if they just uh, what if Joe runs? Trump wins, then they 25th Amendment Joe like two days before the inauguration, and then Kamala has to just show up, be present for a day, and then swear Donald Trump in. That'd be hilarious. It's just, it's crazy. I don't, I don't remember the last time that a presidential election came down to crazy shit like this. Probably hasn't been since, uh, since what, Jimmy Carter, uh, what, what year was that? It was in, during the Vietnam War the, when the DNC, the Democratic Convention, got overrun by protesters. And they did like a, a vote on the floor to... 72 or 76? One of those two, yeah. But yeah, since then... I mean, it was crazy how the George W. Bush and Al Gore thing went down, but that was more about election night. Yeah. Yep, so this is America. It's going to be fun. It'll be interesting, if nothing else. It's going to be fun. You think it's going to be Kamala? If I had to bet right now, yes. Okay, so I have a question for you, Big T, because I do not I do not swim in these corners of the internet. I'm not saying that you subscribe to this theory, but you probably see people that do. The Michelle Obama thing. She's not a politician. That she's going to run? Yeah, yeah. Oh, people there's a zero percent chance. That they're going to replace Joe with Michelle. There's no chance. She's not a politician. She doesn't, she's never served. She would office. win, though. You think? Yeah. If it was her against Trump, she'd win. Why's that? She's likable people, you know, name recognition. She's not any of these people. When did we start saying that she was a man? Was that like two years ago? No, that's been a thing for a long time. Has it? Yeah. I haven't seen it until recently. Oh, no, that's been a thing for a long time. Do people actually think that she's a man or are they just I think making some fun people, of it? I think some people do, yeah. They call her Big Mike, right? 
<laughs> I hadn't seen that. I've seen that. <laughs> I'm just I'm just talking about the memes that I've seen. <sighs> I just didn't know if that if people actually believe that or if it was like lore. I think there are some people who believe that. That'd be wild. You don't think she'd win? She's not a politician. Neither was Trump. Okay, I I guess I'm thinking about it in a couple different ways. She might win. I think she would absolutely I don't know if win. she'd be she's not the best person in the United States. It is it's sick. It's real sick stuff that we live in a country of what 330 million people and these are the two best guys for the job. I think see, here's here's the way I think it breaks right now. I think Trump kills Biden just in an absolute landslide. I think he beats Kamala respectably. I think he would lose to Newsom and Michelle Obama and Whitmer I I don't think she would beat him. Let me just, but I'm not positive. Let me just throw this out here. What's Hillary up to? I've seen that floated. Run it back. That that would be so awesome. <laughs> I I'm rooting for that. That'd be so hilarious. It would it would show you just how dumb the DNC is. That would be better than anything Veep could have ever come up with. Yeah. I guarantee you there's somebody behind the scenes that has floated that out there. Oh, no. I think they've like put it out in the media as like a, a feeler balloon. It would it be crazy if Hillary yeah. did it? Ha ha. Yeah. Uh, J JK, but like what if? But think about it. Is that the wildest thing? It'd be so awesome. Yeah. Hillary, who else could we put? I, I did see, I saw a very, very, uh, what's the word for not like red pilled or, or blue pilled, but if you're just centrist pilled, there's a lot of people out there that are centrist pills. That just love to see, just like democracy. Let's do a, let's do a joint ticket, and somebody suggested Kamala, Liz Cheney, Ugh. as Democrats. Oh, yeah, gross. Yeah, I think the person was actually a Democrat, but one of these like I'm a I'm a center Democrat. I tell you what, and what a time! Uh, if ever there was a a need or a desire for a third party candidate, and the guy who got out here barbecuing dogs, yeah. Yeah, that's I right. Mean, it's crazy. Like like you said, the brain worm, the guy with the brain worm and the dogs that he eats and uh, accusations of sexually assaulting. Which he then responded to by saying, yeah, I have some skeletons in my closet. That what was, of it? That was, wow, the Vanity Fair article that uh, somehow the picture of him standing next to a barbecued dog wasn't the biggest knock against him in the article, which also featured him sexually assaulting uh, his nanny, I believe. And Baby I think, center? I believe his quote was, I never said I'm a choir boy. Yeah. That's a Kennedy. What an insane thing to say. You know what? That's the Kennedy way though. Kind of refreshing. Kennedys are back. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And so that guy might be the one with the smallest amount of baggage amongst the big three. If if there's, if you've ever needed proof that a third party candidate literally cannot ever under any circumstances win in this country, you have it. It's this year. I mean, I guess he's like not a a great candidate either, but like. Well, he also can't talk. Right. So that's an but issue too. If we had a perfect third party candidate, I still don't think they'd win. Yeah. You're probably right. Uh, what else? I, I did. I, on the flight back, it's an 11 hour flight, which by the way, so here's a, here's a true story. First class. I did fly first class. Yeah. yeah. No, that, you got no. to 11 hours. You 11 got hours. To. It's a long flight. Treated myself. Okay. I don't spend money. I, I don't know if you know this about me, but besides like I bought a house Bought an El Camino. Mm -hmm. How's that going, by the way? Uh, okay, so I didn't plan on, on this part of it. Uh, so I had my El Camino towed on Thursday. The guy was like, we're going to fix the carburetor, and we're going to fix the uh, – there's uh, like two electrical things, so I just need to be like tweaked and touched up. Basically, it's the carburetor, and that's it. He was like, no problem. I'll get this in and out. You're going out of the country. I'll have it ready for you by the time you get back, and I'll I'll call you, give you a quote on everything. So uh, don't hear from him. I call him on Friday before I leave. He's like, "Oh yeah, I got the car in. Um, yeah, just look at the carburetor right now. I'll get you a quote on that, and we'll, we'll, I'll call you later." Don't hear back from him. Still don't hear back from him. The week is about to end. I'm like, I'm just going to call this guy back and see what's going on. Leave a message. Doesn't get back to me. Called him today, left another message, hasn't got back to me. Wait, so this is a week ago, like 10 days, not ten like day, three ten days. 10 days, 10 days. Haven't got a quote. This guy might have stolen my car. Oh my God. That's not good. No. <laughs> I'm, I started to panic this morning. I was like, this guy, 
I don't know what's going on, but I feel like if you get somebody's car, you should tell them what the quote on the repair is going to be within 10 days, right? I think that's a reasonable is that outlandish? Uh, amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I had an El Camino. We'll see if it comes back. Okay, so you so you started to say though on the flight back something. Yeah, yeah. So on the on the flight back, um, first of all, the the pilot when he lands the plane, you know, you make a little announcement after you land, let everybody know what the temperature is outside or whatever. This guy's like, uh, and I I'd like you guys to appreciate the brilliant smooth landing executed by our co-pilot, who just happens to be my son, our first flight together. Uh, boo. And I was like, boo. wait a sec. If you're if you're one of these guys that gets on a plane and you're looking to see if the if the pilot is a woman for DEI reasons, what about a nepo baby that's flying the plane? What are the what are the odds this guy got the job to land the plane based off his own volition and off his own uh, credentials? And he just happens to be co pilot for his dad. We're just letting it's like Bronny and, and LeBron James. I've never liked those videos, by the way. Which ones? Of pilots like, oh, I'm. This is my last flight ever, and I'm flying with my son. Like, get the. Uh, nobody cares. That so you've seen that before? Oh, that, it, I've seen them on TikTok and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, this one wasn't. It wasn't like his last flight. He was right. just like my first flight ever with my son. Yeah. And or, he just landed. I've seen pilots be like, uh, everybody t look to seven C. My girlfriend Sarah's sitting there. Yeah. Like, what an asshole thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that either. If someone did that to me, I'd be so embarrassed. I'd be like, please stop looking. Like I don't. I'm not funny. big on pilots. You don't like pilots? Mm. They do get full of themselves sometimes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I do a great pilot voice though. You do. You do. Yeah. Can you hit me with that? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to welcome you aboard uh, United Airlines Flight Six Eight Two service uh, into Houston this afternoon. <laughs> looking at about an hour and twenty minutes in the air. Uh, might be able to get you there a little bit quicker, depending on uh, <laughs> some of the tailwind. Uh, it's about 72 degrees outside today, and uh, we, we understand you have a lot of uh, choice in airline. We appreciate you choosing United. Uh, should have you off the ground shortly. Tell me to, now tell me to close my window when we're on the tarmac because too much heat's getting on. Uh, you, uh, I, I did my thing. Okay, you don't take instructions. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't do requests. Yeah. So, so I'm on the flight back, and... Uh, I need, I get some time to kill. It's 11 hours. So I downloaded the entire Joe Rogan, Terrence Howard, oh. Eric Weinstein interview. So they had an actual mathematician go on there with Terrence Howard to talk about Terrence Howard's ideas. Apparently Terrence Howard isn't the craziest person in the world. He's wrong about a lot of stuff, but some of the stuff, most of the stuff that he says has like some root. In fact, the thing that blew my mind is he hates the number two. Really? We it's had my a, favorite number. We got a problem with two. What's we, that? And I was just on this flight trying to try to figure out what's going on with the number two. So number two, it is uh it's the only even prime number. True. And that it you have to create all new rules of mathematics around the number two because it's an even prime number. And then Terrence Howard was like, What if there's numbers we don't even know about? Like what if there's another single digit number before you go up to ten? Just blew my mind. There's not. There's not. That's that's pretty much what the other guy said in uh, more diplomatic terms at times. Uh, but yeah, get to listen to it. It was like four hours of just shit I did not understand at all. Maybe I, I would say I understood 5% of the things that they were talking about on this podcast. But I the, the big takeaway is we got a problem with two. Interesting. Um, but also Terrence Howard's whole thing about like one times one equals two he was saying that for the shock value to get people to buy into his like entire uh model of the universe that he has in his mind that's based on like circles and geometry and shit anyways it was crazy it was but i feel like i was dumber after i got done listening to it all right uh what else we got today i got another riddle i'll save the riddle i'll save the riddle for later uh big t what else do we have in the news I don't know. It's been so long. Georgia's quarterback's dating a Cavender twin. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Now, how tall is this guy? Um, I think he's not short. I don't know. How I tall? Guess I, six three, six four. I need to know how tall he is. Hold, please. Typing with one hand. Okay. Six four would be good. Six three. I'm seeing six four. Okay, but that he's listed at six four, which means he's six two and a half. He's probably six two. 
Uh, their offensive line, the average height for Georgia offensive linemen this year, 6'7". Average. Is it really? Average. They just signed a dude who's... 6'11". 6'11". I saw that, yeah. Is that too tall? Yes. I think to play that, offensive line? Absolutely. I think that might be too tall. It's f- certainly too tall. You can't get underneath anybody. You can't get underneath anybody. You can't throw the ball over him. You have to almost throw away from him. Yeah. You signed a cornerback to play left tackle. And he, he was a professional basketball player. He was a basketball player, yeah, somehow. He played on like that overtime league or whatever. Oh, did he? Yeah. He played with Bronny, I think. Okay. For, in years ago in like AAU. Yeah, that's too tall. I think that's too tall for an offensive lineman. Unless you had like a really small running back. And then he just picked him up like a basketball and threw him. That's an idea that we've had for uh, for a goal line offense for a while. Just get that like could be interesting. Get Za playing right. running back, and get this guy, six eleven. He just runs back, picks Za up, and then just throws him over the goal line. That's not illegal anymore. Yeah, you can you can do the the bush push, make it happen. Um, I'm reading the list of stuff that you sent over Big T. Eric's exotic European adventure. Yeah, that was you. Trademark. Who's Eric? You. That's me? Yeah. Okay, I think we covered that pretty good. Um, I'll, Just a couple things about Greece. Great food. Food is awesome over there. Maybe the worst beer I've ever had. Terrible beer. Wine, I would imagine, is good. Though. Wine's not even that good. Really? Because it's all volcanic islands, so nothing really grows on them. So they can only grow white wine there. They're trying to figure out how to grow red wine. They can't really do it. Hmm. And the white wines aren't that great. They're like very acidic, not good tasting. Um, there was one island. If I do break out in a rash, if I if I end up keeling over and dying, there was an island that, that we stopped by. And I got off and uh, there was this like rock that I saw people just scraping the side of. And uh, they were making this like clay out of the side of the rock and then rubbing it on their body. I didn't know what it was. I just saw other people do it. So I did it. So I don't know if if it's like truly a Greek thing. I might get super hairy. I don't know. Um, but if I if I get a massive massive rash, that's probably what it is. Uh, what what else from Greece? What was? Oh, I saw the Parthenon, the Acropolis. Acropolis? Yeah, not Acropolis. Go to Nashville, see the Parthenon. Yeah, the Parthenon in Greece is uh, it's cool, but it's also like the most dangerous place for old people to walk. And there were just nothing but old people around us. It's like very smooth marble, very steep, very hot outside. There are people that were really, really having a tough time over there. But the one thing I do like about Greece, very dip-centric culture. So like for foods, they'll bring out like seven dips to start you off. I like that. And it's perfect. I could eat – I most dinners, I would be happier if I just ate the dips and that's it. Who was it that I just saw on TikTok who doesn't use any sauce for anything? It's Megan Trainer's husband. Yep, that's right. No <laughs> sauce? Oh, yeah, Thank you. Is. Thank you for that. You're yeah. Welcome. He doesn't eat any sauce with anything. Why? He just he doesn't do it. That's where all the flavor is. Yeah, no sauce. He eats burgers with no ketchup, no mustard, I, I no guess onions. So, yeah. Yep. Well, I don't know about onions and shit. Oh, sorry, like, not uh, mayonnaise. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't eat queso. Doesn't eat barbecue sauce. I am not going to say what I was about to say. What's that? No, I'm not going to say it. If, this we, is, if you it, were to say it, though, what would you have said? This is Megan Trainer's husband. Are you saying yes. that? Okay. Okay. Just want to clarify that. What What does from that Spy have to do Kids. with anything? Yeah. He's oh the yeah, he's the guy from Spy, Spy Kids. Kids. Okay. That's good. good. What would you have said though if you <laughs> yeah. were going to say something? <laughs> How do the two of them get along? Ah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she's a healthy woman. I think she's slimmed down. Oh, really? She's no longer healthy? Well, yeah, I'm confused. I think she's not like super skinny, but she's not like... Okay. Wait. I was just going to say... Mad Dog, how do you not get it? I, I was going to say... Well, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm saying that Megan Trainer looks like a normal woman that eats sauce on her food. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. Wait, am I she see likes it? she likes dips. Okay. Yeah, she's she's a normal, probably Person. like a normal, average size woman. Yeah, and her husband is a smaller guy. He's very skinny. He's tiny. Is he? I think she did say like she jokingly was like, yeah, no, he's a psychopath. Like he doesn't eat sauce. Like she gets it. Daryl Sabara. That's his name. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's a tiny, tinier little fella. Daryl Sabara. How do I spell that? Oh, here we go. Actually, he's it says five ten, normal sized. 
very normal size. Imagine mm-hmm. not liking like ketchup. No, <laughs> I can't even imagine it. Or like, yeah, like when PFT said queso, I'm like, wow. Ranch? Oh, Guacamole? I don't, I don't like ranch. You don't like ranch? No. Sorry, guys. Yeah, that's weird. I also like, I, I don't get those types of people where they're like, I don't like dips. Like, how do you not like any dip? Like dip isn't like a flavor. Yeah. Also, right. it makes half of foods right. like yeah. what they are. Also, right. like that's like saying like, okay, well, I don't like vegetables or fruit. Like, you, there's multiples. It's like, a whole category. You, you got to find something you like. So that guy, when he gets like pizza, does he not have sauce on the pizza? But that's not a dip. Yeah, but it easily could be. Yeah, it's just underneath the cheese. Yeah. I don't know. It, does he just not like liquids? <clears throat> Like a lick, like the, it may, is it like a consistency? I don't know. It sounds like he's got some trauma. Yeah, yeah. Like Spy kids. something in his past. That's tough. Um, there was one other thing. Uh, Boeing is pleading guilty, so Boeing is taking it on the chin. Yeah, in exchange for nothing. I think they're they're having to pay like a four hundred million dollar fine or something like that. Kind of crazy that if you commit a crime that's big enough, the government will just be like, uh, instead of prison, you can right. just pay us. Yeah, that's crazy. That doesn't seem fair. Just get a massive, massive fine. So yeah, it's the uh, the 737 Max. It's the crashes that happened in Africa. So they they agreed to uh, straighten out and fly right, and they did not live up to the terms of their plea agreement. So now they could either face criminal charges or pay like 400 million bucks. They said we'll plead guilty and pay the 400 million bucks. So uh, somebody should go to jail though. Okay. Anything else we want to get into today? Some housekeeping. Um, we're going to run this interview on, on Thursday's show? Guess so. Okay. We did so. an interview uh, with the guy that's making a Mandela Effect documentary, or he's already made it. And so we get into it with him about the Mandela Effect. But most importantly, we get into him about aliens and about this whole behind-the-scenes drama-filled universe of ufologists and who's a fraud, who's not a fraud. They all hate each other. It's crazy because I, I don't know if they, they look at it mostly as competition. They hate each other. So he calls people up by name. So hopefully we can we can get the people that he called out to refute, have a little debate. And you're not going to be here. I'm not. I'm going to be in Tahoe doing some interviews for PMT. Um, Arian, obviously not here today. Also not here Wednesday. Yeah, Arian is uh, at Disney, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's being a Disney adult right now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to get his thoughts on that when he comes back. On what Disney? Disney as what are, a whole. What are your thoughts on Disney? So yeah, I could see, I could see you going either way. So I, I am like, not like a Disney adult by any stretch of the imagination, but I do enjoy Disney World. Like I think it's fun. You enjoy it a, a normal amount. Yeah. Like I'm not dying to go all the time, but like I've been there as recently as two years ago and like had fun. Like it's it's a fun time. I think I think you have to be a real asshole to go to Disney World and be like, this isn't fun. Like, this is for little kids. Obviously, there is stuff that's for little kids, but like, there's rides and shit that are really cool too. Yeah, I. But I, also, if you're if you're someone who is like checking the Disney blogs to see like what the new snack is at Magic Kingdom, yeah. you need to <laughs> relax as well. I complain about stuff not being uh, immersive enough anymore. Yeah, remember that one guy that wrote an article? It was like in the Orlando newspaper, yeah. just complaining about how uh, because Disney has changed the uh, Song of the South ride, yeah, yeah it's yeah. no longer immersive enough for him. I have heard that that new ride sucks, though. Does it? That's what I've heard. <laughs> uh, Jeff D. Lowe, Disney adult or no? Mm. He's right on the edge. I'm I, going to say. I'm going to say no because he has many other aspects of his personality. Yeah, I agree. He he's not limited. He has the same weird energy about a lot of stuff Correct. that he has about Disney. Correct. It's a weird energy for sure. That's true. But he, he feels the same way about like digging up old James Corden clips. Yes. And or the Olympics. Or and photoshopping James Corden into things. Nobody loves the Olympics like Jeff D. Lowe. He's an Olympic adult. Yeah. Oh yeah, wait, because I was confused how he knew so much about gymnastics oh he just fucking loves the olympics but does he know about the sports like in actual like detail like does he know gymnastics or is he just so involved in the actual like ceremonious olympics of it all 
I don't know, but I know he's obsessed with the Olympics. Yeah, he was tweeting about the gymnastics Olympic trials. I was like, Jeff D. Lowe's a gym head? What the hell's going on? I think he just he knows about all Olympic sports. Should we try to have him on here on Wednesday to talk about the Olympics? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'll hit him up. Mm. I'll see if he can do that for sure. He would probably love to talk. He's yeah. been to the Olympics. Uh, there is. Yeah, he worked. I think he worked for like mm-hmm. them. One more thing I want to talk about, Karen Reed. I'm upset that I am not in the know on this. I I just started to scratch the surface of it. I assume that somebody in this room would be familiar with Karen Reed. I'm not. I'm familiar no. with it, but I'm no not idea. in the weeds. We need to talk to somebody that is familiar with the Karen Reed trial because it does sound interesting. And who, who would be? Who's in on this? I think there's Hank, a couple people here. Hank yeah. might be. Actually. It was in Boston, so, yeah, or Massachusetts. Hank was the one that told me about it, and I looked into it. And I was like, "She's guilty," and he's huh. like, "No, look into it more." And I'm like, "Well, I don't know." So they they had a mistrial, and then they said they were going to retry it, but it seems like that might not happen. But then they fired like the lead investigator because he was sending text calling her a cunt. Yeah. Oh was, my god. It was yeah. a wild story, and it's like all cops that were at a house. And the guy that got killed was a cop, too. She was dating him. She dropped him off, she says. But then he was found dead in a snowbank with injuries that might not be from a car accident. But they might be. What? I think she did it. I think she got hammered and did it. I think most people think she didn't. Really? Oh, yeah. I think the prevailing theory for sure is that she's well, innocent. I need I need to look into it more. I'm not saying my mind's made up. I'm just saying based on just uh, like a 30,000-foot... Yeah, by the time people were talking about it, I I wasn't in on it. So then I figured it was just too late. We love a good drama filled trial like that. I feel like we we haven't. When was the last good trial that we had? I mean, like Johnny Depp. See, I didn't. That was that was civil, and it wasn't. It's got first of all, it's got to be a criminal trial. Yeah. So like, I mean, going all the way back to Casey Anthony. Mm -hmm. Casey Anthony, yeah. I don't know if there's been one that big since then. No, I mean, this one was pretty big, so I want to know more about it. I hope they retry it just for, for TV. Was George Zimmerman after Casey Anthony? I, I think, think so. so. I think he was. But that was more like people were really mad about that. People were like right. very, very emotional about that. But with, with the Karen Reed, it's just like that's that's entertainment for us. Oh, the Murdaugh trials. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are interesting. Mm. Those are good. Uh but I feel like this one, this one has, it's had a moment. Hopefully we get two moments out of it. All right. Anything else, guys? I don't reckon. I did see that Eric Adams invented a trash can. Saw that. Congrats to New York for finally uh, figuring out trash cans. The, it, we have a, a solution to all your trash problems. It's called a trash can. If you don't know and you move to New York, you are shocked at how they deal with the trash there. It's just bags on the street. Yeah, it's just there. Yeah, it's just there all the time. You're just walking around trash. No alleys, no trash cans, just bags and bags of trash on every street corner. And on sidewalks. It's crazy. Somehow it works. Well, not anymore. Eric Adams figured it out. There's going to be a trash can now. Great work, Eric. (laughs) All right. We will see you guys on Thursday. Hopefully get into some Olympic talk and also an interview about the Mandela effect. Love you guys. Mm-hmm.